the ancient fortress city of Pskov on Russia's far western border. For centuries, a buttress against foreign invaders. This is the day Pskov dedicates to those Russian soldiers who saved their city from Hitler's Nazi troops nearly 60 years ago. Today, many here believe a new invasion is underway. The foe, the Catholic Church, religious intruders out to steal their immortal souls. Позвонение сказать мне язык не поворачивает, сказать его храмом, потому что в храме люди общаются с Богом, а здесь притон какой-то будет, по-моему. Хотя сделать шпиль самым высоким зданием в городе. То есть представьте, их шпиль будет выше нашего Троицкого собора. Leading the attack on the Catholics, fellow Christians from the Russian Orthodox Church. Russian Orthodox Church wants to keep Russia for Russians. The head of the Russian Orthodox Church, Patriarch Alexei II. Second only in influence to the Russian president. The Patriarch is moral leader to Russia's 100 million Orthodox followers. Yet under his reign and with his guidance, the Russian government has vigorously pursued a policy of religious discrimination, removing all rivals to the Orthodox Church. One of Russia's leading theological commentators, Yakov Krotov. Power corrupts, and the power of the Patriarch of Moscow also corrupts. He doesn't want any competition, and he prefers to return to the Soviet past. Back to the USSR, when life was very quiet and predictable. The Orthodox Church considers Catholics like the Nedov family a dangerous challenge to its spiritual hold on Russia. Volodya Nedov is a recent convert to Catholicism. Вот это самое интересное, что меня никто никогда не пытался туда затащить. Вот именно в католический храм. Кстати, это скорее всего больше всего повлияло на мое на мое решение вот именно ходить. Вот я тоже думал, куда мне. Ну вот мне надо идти к Богу. Я понял это. But the Orthodox Church claims Catholic priests are actively trying to convert Russians like Volodya. And it fears losing more souls like his. Out of a population of 150 million people, just half a million Russians are Catholics. For a church racked by crises in the West, Russia presents a vast new market. This mass is a celebration of a milestone, the creation by the Vatican of four new Catholic dioceses in Russia. For the head of the Catholic Church here, it's simply a natural step forward. We here in Russia, bishops and our priests, religious and our faithfuls, we see that the time is came. But to the Orthodox Church, to its leader, Patriarch Alexei, 
and to his right-hand man, Metropolitan Kirill, the creation of the Catholic diocese amounts to a declaration of territorial war. I think that to bring as much souls to the church, to bring them to Catholicism, Like the vast majority of Russians, Volodya Netov grew up in a world with no God. For 70 years, all Russians were forced to hide or abandon their beliefs. All denominations suffered. Priests were executed, churches destroyed, and religious artifacts desecrated. But long before the collapse of the Soviet Union, the Russian Orthodox Church began collaborating with the communist regime. Patriarch Alexei II is accused of being among those with direct dealings with the feared secret police, the KGB. By chance, some evidence has preserved in the archives of KGB in Estonia a very definite proof of the fact that he collaborated with KGB on the official level in order to make his career to become a bishop. When the communists fell, religions of every kind mushroomed. But not for long. Though Russia adopted a policy of religious freedom, all denominations have bowed to the Orthodox Church, backed by the power of the state. Moonies, Krishnas, Scientologists, Mormons. Then in the second half of the 90s, we've struggled with Baptists, Pentecostals, and different missions from South Korea and from states. And we have and we have conquered them. So it's a sort of a very sad victory. So the last enemy is the Rome, the Roman Catholic Church. Ну там я ему Александра Роу предложил вот фильмы, которые сам знаю по детству. Вот какие-то там мультфильмы, не важно. Я вижу как раз наоборот, что берут именно культуру русскую. Для меня а зачем мне кто-то будет что-то рассказывать, там, я не знаю, какой-то прозелитизм. Где? Вот. Я вижу это своими глазами. Меня, люди меня спрашивают. For months, the Russian patriarch has watched furious as Pope John Paul II has drawn closer to Russia, visiting Ukraine, Azerbaijan and Kazakhstan. He knows the pontiff has one great desire, to set foot on Russian soil before he dies. But with the two churches pitted against one another, Russia is now enemy territory. Это несовместимые вещи. Когда начинаются военные действия, то глава государства не приезжает в это государство. Anti-Catholic sentiment is running at an all-time high, with thousands of Russians joining rallies around the country. Yet the Russian Orthodox and the Roman Catholic churches are sister churches, almost identical in theological beliefs and practices. Once, they were the one church. The one church was torn asunder nearly a full millennium ago, the year 1054. In the centuries since, Bitterness and rivalry have kept the two churches apart. Up until this point, there has been at least dialogue keeping alive the hopes of a reconciliation. 
but now the Russian Orthodox Church has announced a total collapse in relations, accusing the Vatican of invading territory that rightly belongs to the Russian Orthodox Church. Это есть некий империализм, если хотите, западный культурный. Это есть вторжение в нашу культуру, это разрушение нашей идентичности. The Orthodox Church's Metropolitan Kirill accuses his Catholic brothers of betrayal by revealing nothing of their plans for change. Такое впечатление, что вас просто обманывают. Перед вами открывают объятия и говорят, мы братья, а поступают так, как не просто братья, даже знакомые-то, соседи так не поступают. The Russian Orthodox Church is now using its powerful political influence to punish the Catholic clergy. Among them, Bishop Jerzy Mazur. Expelled to his Polish homeland, the Catholic bishop now waits in exile for news of his future. They told me that I can't enter the territory of Russia, of Russian Federation. The Vatican had just appointed him to head the largest of the four new dioceses in Russia, including the far-flung parts of Siberia. The Russian government has refused to explain why he was expelled, but the Orthodox Church has accused him of proselytizing, actively converting Russians. I now see that is the Orthodox Church who is behind this, accusing me of proselytism of the whole church. Это ложь. Это ложь. Мы не имели никакого отношения к этому инциденту. Я до сих пор не знаю, почему это произошло. Bishop Mazur is one of five priests to be deported. More are expected to follow. Enter Russian President Vladimir Putin. Pope John Paul has appealed to the Russian President to stop the expulsion of Catholic priests. Mr Putin has done nothing. State and Church have colluded, says Yakov Krotov. President Putin has the decisive role in the attack on Roman Catholics because it was secular power who expelled Bishop Yerzy Mazur. The Patriarch and the President, the alleged KGB collaborator and the former KGB agent. Power and influence entwined. President Putin has worked hard to be seen as pro-Western, but the policy of religious discrimination carried out by his government makes a mockery of Russian democracy. As a Christian, I must remind about the importance of looking inside the man, not to look on the face. And Putin certainly is more Western in his habits, manners, language, Still inside, he's much less Western than Mikhail Gorbachev or Boris Yeltsin. Much less. And his pro-Western politics is more a myth. It is the invention of Putin to make a good face in dealing with the West, to receive money from the West. The historic Moscow summit between President Putin and U.S. President George W. Bush seemed harmonious. But behind the scenes, President Bush arranged a private meeting with the head of the Catholic Church. So he came, his first words, he said, you are in troubles. <laughs> so he was informed. So, <laughs> and uh, we, we, we were speaking about, we spent about 10 minutes, I would say, and uh, once more he underlined that uh, 
Uh, everybody must have a free right to choose his religion, separation between the church and the state. And uh, he promised to speak with uh, President Putin. So far, the Russian president has refused to intervene. Even here, where the rivalry and hatred is stripped bare, the provinces where religious intolerance is encouraged. Leading the procession, Archbishop Yevsevi of Skov, who has appealed to the president to rid his region of all Catholics. Archbishop Yevsevi, he sent uh, two letters, one to the President Putin and the second one to the uh, local governor, asking to expel all Catholics from the territory. He says, hey, no place for Catholics here. Христос веру православную, это испокон веков, мы знаем, и деды, прадеды, понимаешь, а католику это они не признают. Не за это, а хотят победить христианскую веру. За это, за то, чтобы победить ее, чтобы нас согнать это. Это, будет, это страшное нашествие идет, нашествие на племенников, страшное. Nowhere is the feeling stronger than in the Orthodox parish right next door to where the Catholics are building a huge church. After the letters from Archbishop Yevsevi, local authorities halted construction on the church. There have been calls to tear it down. Right after Mass, a band of ultra-nationalists protested outside the church. Freedom of religion is based on the recognition of dignity of human being. And everybody has a right to be a Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox, Muslim, Jews, believer or non-believer. In this tiny converted garage in Pskov, where the Catholics hold mass until their new church is finished, the congregation grows. Neither the Catholic Church nor the Russian Orthodox Church is showing any sign of retreat. Both are firm in the belief God is on their side.